Hello everyone. In the very first video I posted on this channel, I made a small security camera completely from scratch. And I said that this camera had a lot of potential. Now I want to prove that. That's why I decided to start a new project, in which I will upgrade the camera and make it even smaller. It will be fully remotely controlled and it will also have the night vision. My goal is to build a small, pocket-sized, remotely controlled night vision surveillance camera. And not only that, I also want to upgrade my control system. So, in short, I want to create a complete, small, portable surveillance camera system that could be operated anywhere, at any time, even in complete darkness. So, let's get straight to it. So, from the last video and my previous testing, I already knew that all the components and electronics were working perfectly fine. The camera itself was fully functional, so there was no real need to change any of the electronics. However, the entire camera was built on a portboard, which made it far too big to be considered a small security camera. Because of that, I decided to completely disassemble it. I unsoldered all of the components from the portboard and started rebuilding everything in a much more compact form. I used the battery as the base of the build and glued the components directly onto both sides of it. After that, I soldered all the components back together and in the end, the camera was once again fully functional, just like before, but now it's much smaller and much more compact. So, with this new compact version of the camera and the already working remote control system from before, there was only one major thing left to do, give this camera night vision. I achieved this by first replacing the original lens that normally comes with ESP32 camera with a much larger lens that is capable of seeing infrared light. However, with just this modification, the camera still wouldn't be able to see in the complete darkness. For that, you need some sort of infrared light, a light source that emits infrared light into the room. Only then can the camera see in complete darkness. That is why I added these small infrared LEDs, which are capable of emitting infrared light. I could have the, taken the simplest approach and soldered them directly to the power source, so they would be turned on all the time. But what if you don't want that? For example, if you place the camera somewhere that is already well lit, like on the street, there is no real need for true night vision. So I decided to make not only the camera remotely controllable, but also infrared light itself. The principle behind remotely controlling the infrared LEDs is basically the same as the system used to turn the camera on and off remotely. If you're interested in how this system works in more detail, Free, feel free to check out my first video where I explain it step by step. With all of these new upgrades and modifications, the camera itself is basically finished. Now there's only one major thing left to improve, a control system. In my first prototype video, I used ESP32 board with external antenna and simple button to turn the camera on and off. This time I upgraded the system so there's no button anymore. Instead, I'm using joystick module. I also added a display while still using ESP32 board with external antenna. The idea is to create a universal controller that can be used to control all of the cameras. On the display, there is a simple menu for each camera. The first thing shown in the menu is which camera is currently selected, for example, cam 1. Then you have options to turn the camera on or off, as well as to control infrared light. At the bottom of the menu, the IP address of the selected camera is displayed. Once the camera is turned on, you can connect to its Wi-Fi network enter this IP address into your browser and watch the live video stream. You can navigate through the menus and switch between different cameras using the joystick module. I hope you found this project interesting and enjoyed the video. There's still one more thing left to do. The camera needs a proper enclosure. In the next video, I'll design and 3D print the case for it. I will also show you some real test footage, so you can see how the camera performs in the its final form and whether everything works as intended. So, once again, thanks for watching, I hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!